This is the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday, the 30th of January. I'm James Spann here, and uh, our annual storm alert tour kicks off this week. This is the annual severe weather awareness tour across the state. We've been doing this thing for uh, 14 years, and obviously this year it promises to be pretty powerful and somewhat emotional. And we hope to see you there. We're, we're taking the show to some of the hardest hit areas. We can't go everywhere from last year. We had 63 tornadoes in one day. But uh, we begin it in Tuscaloosa uh, this Thursday at 6.30 at Central High School. And we recommend you get there early to get a good seat. And you'll see some stuff you've not seen before about April 27th of last year. So uh, uh, we expect pretty big crowds. And we got a lot to talk about. So we're excited about that. All right, let's check some of the Skycam shots around the Alpha Skycam network early this morning. There's a look at downtown Gadsden at the ridiculous hour of 5 o'clock. Pretty cold, everybody below freezing. That's a Skycam along Highway 269 in Parrish in Walker County, south of Jasper. And way down south, there's the Alabama Gulf Coast on a chilly midwinter morning. All right, got a couple of features to watch. We've got energy over Mexico, and those can be problematic in that that's not in the American Upper Air Network, and often the models don't handle that well. So we'll watch the upper low south of El Paso. We've got energy in the Pacific Northwest, but obviously we're in good shape today. And, yeah, it's cold this morning. Upper 20s and low 30s for most spots uh, early this morning. Birmingham sitting at 32. Looks like the cold spot is Gadsden at 27. And around the nation... Coldest air over eastern Canada in the Great Lakes. And out west, it you know, it's cool, but I'd say temperatures above average out there for this time of the year. And look at that. No major issues around the nation with winter storms or severe weather, heavy rain, just some red flag warnings. That's related to dry air and the danger of wildfires, including most all of our counties here. There's the rain for the next five days. The uh, QPF chart valid through Friday evening at uh, uh, 6 o'clock, and this is suggesting about one-half inch, and that would be Wednesday night, maybe early Thursday. No severe weather this time. We'll check the modeling. This is the 06 ZGFS, valid at noon today at 500 millibars, about 18,000 feet off the ground. and Got a zonal flow, and down below that, we should uh, warm up nicely despite the morning chill. How about a high of 63 today? That's the suggestion by both the NAM and the GFS. Tomorrow, upper 60s. Yeah, we'll take that. Probably partly sunny as moisture starts to return. And then uh, Wednesday, you can see that uh, shortwave energy across the nation's midsection approaching. And it's clearly a zonal flow, so no cold air involved. And down below that, uh, uh, rain breaks out north and west of the state. And this has got some kind of big blob of convection down below Mobile Bay. That might be convective feedback. I don't know if that'll be there, but... Uh, I think the day Wednesday could be dry, but we'll go to uh, midnight Wednesday night, and it's got showers passing through here, and that seems to be the target time for the showers would be Wednesday night. And then on Thursday, the energy is on by, and down below that, the rain is pretty much out of here by midday Thursday. So I uh, will mention a chance of showers late Wednesday, Wednesday night, early Thursday. No severe weather, rain amounts of about one half inch or less, and no cold air, obviously, with that. In fact, uh, uh, the GFS is showing 68 on Thursday and Friday. We're kind of in between waves, uh, maybe a mixture of clouds and sunshine and those thickness values suggesting a high of about 70. Ooh yeah. And that look shows a nice uh, snow event maybe for parts of the uh, western high plains, the plains of Colorado and down into Kansas. Rain breaks out over Texas. Now we'll check the uh, European, however, and, and let me just tell you, we've had a lot of model madness here, so the confidence is somewhat lower than you'd expect. The, the European is suggesting it might rain on us on Friday, where the GFS is bone dry. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. For now, we'll leave it dry. We might have to adjust that. And again, that's got that good snow look out there for western Kansas and parts of the uh, western high plains. We'll go to Saturday, back to the GFS. It's got showers trying to ease in here as we start the weekend. And then we'll go to Sunday, and there's the deal. This upper low kind of sets up uh, north and west of the state, and it doesn't want to move, and that might mean kind of a prolonged showery period. This is Sunday, and it still looks kind of wet. We'll check the uh, European, kind of the same look. Uh, showers, but nothing heavy. We'll go to Monday of next week, and again, we're wet, so it looks like we'll have to mention a chance of rain, maybe not continuous, but at least some risk of rain uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of next week. Go out there a little deeper in the month. How about the 11th of February? Got a uh, kind of a cold look over the east with uh, uh, the 540 line down there below uh, Birmingham. Not you know not excessively cold. 
And then on the 14th, Valentine's Day. Eh, just kind of a wavy, more of a zonal look. And again, uh, that looks awfully mild. You know, we've got a 1044 high up there over western Canada, but it just doesn't want to get down in here. You know, keep in mind, we've got temperatures in Alaska now as cold as 60 below zero. It's brutal. I mean, brutally cold up there. And the big question is, will that make a move down our way? Remains to be seen, but we'll check the North Atlantic Oscillation. And again, as long as that thing stays positive, it's just going to be hard to get any of that down here for any you know, extended period of time. Uh, so through mid-month, uh, again, the NAO for now still looks to be positive. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 3.30 or so today. And if you are around these parts, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren you cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.